Most people go to the movies often looking for narratives and stories and are interested in the journeys taken by the characters. However, one of the great things about the cinematic medium is how it has the freedom to give the audience all kinds of experiences. And the concert film is an example of this, as it can allow people to see their favorite singers and musicians without the worry of trying to get concert tickets. Then musical performances are also preserved forever for future generations. What is usually regarded as the first concert film is Adventure in Music, released in 1944, which featured performances of classical music pieces. Reviews of the time were dismissive, though, wondering why people would go to a movie to see a concert, and the movie appears to be lost. Short films are also commonly produced, featuring concert and musical performances. One of them, Overture to the Merry Wives of Windsor, featuring Johnny Green conducting the MGM Symphony Orchestra, even won an Oscar for Best Short Subject. A notable concert film is Jazz on a Summer's Day, released in 1959, and featuring a variety of jazz musicians. Filmed at the Newport Jazz Festival, the film allowed audiences to experience Dinah Washington, Louis Armstrong, Chuck Berry, and other talented singers and musicians. A pivotal year for the concert film was 1970. Woodstock was released that year, giving people all over the world the opportunity to see the famous festival, including the many performances. Running over three hours, the film was a big hit and showed the box office potential in recording and releasing concerts to the public. Woodstock also won the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature, in addition to being nominated for its sound recording and editing. The Rolling Stones released their own concert film, Gimme Shelter. While the intention was to show their concert at the Altamont Speedway in California, chaos erupted instead. The Hells Angels had been hired to serve as security, but the large amount of drugs taken by the bikers and the audience led to fights even when the musicians were up on stage performing their songs. Most producers would have probably elected to scrap the film, but that footage ended up being included, allowing for a real portrait of what happens when a concert does not go as planned, and Gimme Shelter is now regarded as one of the best concert films. Elvis Presley also got his own concert film in 1970, titled That's the Way It Is. He would follow that up with Elvis on tour a few years later. Someone who also tried her hand at a concert film in the early 70s was Aretha Franklin. It was filmed at the New Temple Missionary Baptist Church in Los Angeles with Sidney Pollack directing. However, because Pollock had not used clapperboards for some reason, it became difficult to sync up the audio during post-production. The film was scrapped and the footage stayed in Warner Brothers' vaults for several decades. Eventually, after editing, delays, and lawsuits, Amazing Grace was finally released in 2018. However, it probably would have made quite the impact in 1972 had it been completed then. Martin Scorsese, who is one of the editors on Woodstock, directed his own concert film for the band titled The Last Waltz. Despite some difficulties with the cameras and getting Bob Dylan to sign off on his appearance, the film is acclaimed as a great documentation of the band and the other singers who participate in this farewell concert. The 80s would continue to show the interesting concert films, especially with the rise of MTV. The most acclaimed concert film from that decade is probably Stop Making Sense, featuring a performance from The Talking Heads. Directed by Jonathan Demme, the film remains highly revered, and a recent re-release distributed by A24 has found success. Later on, popular artists like U2 and Madonna would make their own concert films. A lot of the time, concert films had primarily appealed to a singer and musician-specific fan base, and often did not play outside of a limited number of screens. The 3D format would allow audiences to become even more fully immersed in the concert experience, giving more incentive to seek out a theater showing it. One of the biggest came with the Hannah Montana Miley Cyrus Best of Both Worlds concert tour. Cyrus and her alter ego had a massive built-in fan base of youngsters, and even though Disney originally announced the film would only play in theaters for one week, the fantastic opening weekend led to the idea of being mixed, and it played for several more weeks to adoring fans. U2 also put out their own successful concert film in 3D, which ran in theaters for a long time. The Jonas Brothers 3D concert experience would follow after those two. There's a debate about whether Michael Jackson's This Is It counts as a concert film or not. After all, that concert was never held due to the Jackson's death, and the film was largely edited from the hours of rehearsal footage that existed, so it could be argued it was more akin to something like The Beatles' Let It Be, with it documenting Jackson's preparation. However, fans went to see the movie mainly to see him perform one final time, so it depends on the individual viewer. Meanwhile, the young audience members who propelled Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, and One Direction to superstardom helped their concert films reach strong numbers at the box office. Fathom Events, which specializes in movie re-releases and broadcasting live events at movie theaters, has found particular success with concert films. For example, they've released concert films of Dutch violinist Andrew Rio every year for a devoted audience. They've also gone on board the K-pop trend and have had success with BTS concert films like BTS World Tour Love Yourself and Soul and BTS Yet to Come in Cinemas. 
It's not just movie theaters that have done well with concert films. Naturally, streamers have gone into the action, making deals with various artists. Netflix has released a bunch of concert films on that platform, including ones from Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Bruce Springsteen, and Shawn Mendes. Disney Plus has similarly featured concert films of Elton John, Billie Eilish, BTS, and of classic songs from the Disney catalog. With this resurgence of interest in concert films, we're even seeing attempts to dig into the archives and restore concert footage from past decades. I mentioned Aretha Franklin's Amazing Grace earlier, and one I found particularly impressive was Questlove digging up footage of the 1969 Harlem Cultural Festival. Editing it with contemporary interviews for further context, he made Summer of Soul, which showcased those performances and allowed modern viewers to get to see this concert that had long been buried in the archives for 50 years, gathering dust. And for those efforts to bring this concert back to light, Summer of Soul would win an Oscar for Best Documentary Feature, a Grammy for Best Music Film, and several other awards. Of course, the most talked about concert film right now is Taylor Swift The Eras Tour. The concert itself was already enormously successful, but Swift seemed to recognize that many of her fans would not be able to get tickets. She filmed the concert and then shopped it around to big Hollywood distributors for possible interest. However, she eventually decided she wanted to handle the distribution herself, going straight to AMC and other theater chains to release the film, shocking the major studios. She was also able to set her own pricing, and that film only played four days a week. With her enormous fan base, the Eras Tour has unsurprisingly become a big success, although the question now becomes which artists will come close to the grosses of the Eras Tour. Beyoncé is using the same distribution method for her upcoming concert film in December, and like Swift, she is a singer with a massive fan base who will surely flock to theaters to see her movie. Who else can make concert films in the future? I know singers like Billie Eilish, Ed Sheeran, Rihanna, Olivia Rodrigo, and Selena Gomez have devoted followings. And of course, you have singers and performers who've been around for decades and still have many dedicated fans, like Britney Spears, The Backstreet Boys, Paul McCartney, and Weird Al Yankovic. While their possible concert films may not reach the heights of the Eras Tour, they don't have to. As long as there's a fan base, many singers and musicians have the ability to film one of their concerts, put it in theaters, and get people out to see them. So I would like to conclude by asking you what singers you would love to see put out a concert film in the future, and I'll see you next time.